Welcome to Quiet in the Library. Welcome all to another episode of Quiet in the Library. I am your host, Reggie, and we are about to get into the final two pieces of this last chapter, Loose Ends Part 2 and 3, to conclude The Man With No Name. And I'm very excited to get into the rest of this, so let's get it started. Wu Ming looked on as the warlord surrounded the lone Iron Lady. End of the world is Wu's territory, Ephrodite was saying. And so is the entirety of Fell Winter Peak. That changes tonight. A crescent of light arced between the warlord's open hands. I have an army of raiders and a fire team of risen waiting on my command. Fell Winter's lost his mind siding with you, Lop. Underneath the helm, Saiten's eyes flickered from the Iron Lady to his warlord ally positioned behind her. The flanking warlord raised a massive hand cannon and thundered a bullet. Directly into Sighton's chest, as Ephrodite dropped to a knee. She swung her cannon to her right side with her left fist and let loose with a roaring double tap behind her, shattering the rear warlord's head. Wu Ming saw that she hadn't so much as looked. The third warlord submachine weapon fired a spray of bullets that hammered the floor as Ephrodite rolled. Wu cursed inwardly as wood splinters went flying all over the room. People screamed. But it was already over. The third warlord crumpled. Ephrodite's solar knife had divided his head. Hold! The lady barked, firing her cannon into the ceiling as three ghosts materialized above their charges. Bits of wood fell on her shoulder. Wu Ming cursed audibly this time. You know who I am, she shouted at the room. At this distance, I could shoot all of you out of the air swifter than you could ever bring your risen back. The traveler's children froze, their shells spinning aggressively in the air like metallic bees. You're free to go, she told them. But your risen stay with me. Follow the iron decree and you'll get them back. In time, the ghosts looked at one another. Tell the warlords, she sneered. Fellwinter Peak belongs to the wolves. The ghosts left the way their owners came. The bar patrons began murmuring. Ephrodite's ghosts, always a quick thinker, started playing music. Lady Scory singing an old hymn. The patrons backed away from the three warlord bodies, but began chattering amongst themselves. The din of conversation gradually filled the room and built to a dull roar. The music helped. Is this why you asked me here? Ephrodite said, holstering her weapon. You said you had some business that paid. I did. You just finished it. He responded, reaching out with a fistful of glimmer. The Iron Lady stared down at it, gawking beneath her helmet. Who the hell pays you? I have means, Wu Ming said, chuckling. Stick with me, sister. I'll make you rich, I promise. She eagerly took the sapphire cubes out of his hand. Glimmer represented pure material potential. You didn't bring Fellwinter, Wu said. She eyed him. I told you he never comes down from the peak unless it's official Iron Lord business. What do you need from him? 
Hey, what are you doing later? Wu asked suddenly. Hunting fallen. They're becoming a problem at Boyle Pass. We'll be at it till dusk, Ephrodite said, lifting the helmet just above her mouth to grab a drink from behind the counter and swallow an entire mug of malt Wu served. She belched and asked, Care to join us? Her smile just beneath her helm was all teeth. <laughs> Wu chuckled. Nah, a mere mortal at a risen fight? I'd just get in the way, he thought for a second. Would you like to dance before you go? Nah, she said, imitating his tone. The helm came down. He cocked his head over the music and then leaned in to ask. Wait, what, what do you think I said? Would you like to dance before you go? She repeated. I would love to, he said, stepping forward, arms wide. She sidestepped him and kicked his leg out from under him. He went tumbling to the ground and someone spilled their drink on him. I had to try, he called from the floor, watching her go. The plume of her helmet rose above the crowd and was already halfway out the door. Take the bodies, he yelled, still on the ground. It took him three hours to climb the peak that night. He was shivering in his long coat, and if not for his ghost, he would have succumbed to the cold long ago. Ghost was hidden, of course. The massive castle doors were already open when he arrived at the top. An exo, eyes glowing in its sleek black skull, stood just beyond them. It released whatever weapon it was reaching for inside its great coat when Wu Ming approached with his hands held high. I come in peace, brother. It wasn't much warmer inside. Though Felwinter's ghost had lit the fireplace for Wu, he sat across from the former warlord, both of them in massive gothic chairs. Who are you? Felwinter spoke first. Your neighbor... I live downstairs. Been trying to get your attention for a month. Wu Ming grinned. What do you want? Wu thought about it. I heard you kill. A necessity of life in this post-collapse existence. No, I'm talking risen. Final deaths. It's gotten real taboo recently. You iron lords are changing things. Who are you? I don't believe you've been honest with me. Felwinter's voice echoed through the chamber. Wu Ming leaned back and rubbed his temples. His hand shook. Felwinter started unblinking. Wu had the feeling the Exo would sit frozen in time until he said something. Ghost, Wu Ming beckoned. His only friend in the world materialized out of the air. Is that supposed to impress me? Felwinter asked without a shred of irony. How else would you have survived the climb? Wu coughed. Go shook his head at him. Let me ask again, then, Wu Ming said, straightening to his full posture in the stupid chair. Will you break the Iron Decree? Will you kill for real? As a warlord, I did many things I'm not proud of. Under the Iron Lords, I adhere to strict rules of engagement, Felwinter said. His voice sounded hollow inside his armored skin. Ghosts are not valid targets. I heard you care very much about right and wrong, and the delivery of justice to those who deserve it. Felwinter's eyes glowed brighter. I can't think of a more human act, he said, after a moment's pause. I don't know that anyone has the right to that. But I believe in revenge with all my heart. And I have a request, knowing that you do what you do. Felwinter tapped his chin. What are you asking me? 
Wu Ming told him a story about a long-forgotten town far away called Eton. Early in the age of the Iron Lords, a lord named Dryden had brought food for the town-starving people, but in return asked to use them as bait to bring a local warlord into position for an ambush. This, Wu had learned, went against the code set out by Lord Radagast, the founder of the order. Dryden had broken the rule of involving lightless individuals in Iron Lord business. Because it was those people the lords had unified to protect. The town had agreed, of course. What choice did it have? But the ambush had gone horribly wrong. The warlord target had brought a whole fire team to the fight. Eaton's erasure was utter and complete. Though Wu later learned that Dryden won the battle, he lost every lord under his command, ghosts and all, and he committed the additional sin of inflicting final deaths on the warlords he defeated in an act of bloodlust and rage. In the intervening years, Wu had learned that Dryden kept this under wraps, that he and his ghost were now among the most decorated of lords, next to the likes of rising champions like Lord Saladin and Lady Ephrodite themselves. Fellwinter sat frozen in his chair. It was difficult to tell if he had registered any of what Wu Ming had said. How do I know you're not lying? The hollow voice asked finally. I have live recordings, Wu replied. His ghost transmitted a data stream to Fellwinter's ghost, who nodded. Eaton, who are these people to you? Nothing. Just ghosts. You want revenge for people you care nothing about? Is the dark horse of iron for hire? Fellwinter stood and politely motioned for Wu Ming to take his leave. Wu sighed, shrugged, and left the chamber. He had a long climb ahead of him. The exo parted his coat and drew a long bronze shotgun from his side. What do you think? His ghost asked. Call Lord Dryden. Prepare my iron banner arsenal. And that concludes the man with no name. Um, I think... I thank everyone for for joining in, being able to listen to, you know, tell this this story of this one little piece inside of Destiny 2. And uh, if stories like this interest you, we've got a, pun- a bunch of other content still coming uh, from varying different games. Uh, we'll also be revisiting more stories inside of Destiny 2. Uh, but for the next episode, we're actually going to be doing a recap a little bit over what we just went through. Uh, with the man with no name as well as the upcoming season of dawn thoughts and we'll be having a special guest so thanks for tuning in we appreciate you and thanks for listening to quiet in the library